Welcome back. Our next guest. Now they're, oh, very good. The audience has been stunned into silence for an hour because of our next guest. He, along with his brother, directed two of the top five grossing movies of all time, including number one on that list, a little independent film called Avengers Endgame, which has made... Which has made nearly, and just take this number in for a second, has made nearly $2.8 billion worldwide. Look at this. That is a clip from Avengers Endgame, which is now available. It's now available on Blu-ray and streaming as well. Give it up for the director of that movie and Infinity War, Mr. Anthony Russo, everybody. Let me move this flower. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sincerely, I, I read a tease for this show. I did the tease yesterday, and I'm like, hey, come on. And I said your name, and a woman in the second row passed out. She couldn't believe oh, no. that she was at the wrong show. <laughs> oh, no. When you hear people, I'm not the first one to introduce you, or you're, I'm not the first person to say the words, you were the co-director of the biggest, most successful movie of all time. Can you wrap your brain around that? No. No. It's, I mean, it sounds surreal, and... Uh... I just kind of, I think I kind of block it out. I think my brother and I both kind of block it out. Yeah. Because, I mean, look, we, we love, we're so proud of the movie. We're so happy with it. And the fact that it's being embraced is like, it, that's what means everything. Well, I was going to say, uh, there's one thing, because it is your baby, your babies, and you've put so much effort into it. So you have the self-satisfaction of like, hey, I like it. I'm happy with this. But it must be a great gift for you after the reviews started coming in, and not only were the critics loving it, but the fans were loving it, what does that feel like as, as a creative? It, it, look, it means everything. You know, certainly making a movie, you know, according to your own barometer and your own mm. taste and your own instincts is the most important thing, and we, we did that. But uh, unless it reaches an audience, you haven't kind of completed the, the process of making a film because film is expensive, film is difficult. It requires a lot of people and a lot of money to create a film. A lot of money in this case. A lot of That's money. right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you gotta, so until you've landed it with audiences, you really haven't completed the effort. I was gonna say, I mean, when you see the sheet or when you see the, 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 the pieces of paper that land on your desk and you see the budget, do you ever get used to seeing that figure on a piece of paper that you are <laughs> responsible for? As you can imagine, we had a lot of people involved with this movie who have been involved with some of the biggest and the best movies for the past 30 years. Yeah. And everybody was shocked about dimensions of the movie <laughs> on that level, whether it be budget size or crew size or the scope of our sets. It was, it was shocking all around. Okay, so there's one thing making an independent film, but there's another thing making what they call a big budget studio film, tentpole. There's a whole bunch of terms. For you as a director, for as a creative, yes, there are challenges, but what's the biggest joy for you and your brother making a movie of this scale? What, what makes you the happiest? It's definitely, I mean, look, at, at the end of the day, my brother and I always say, like, filmmaking is kind of the same from our point of view, no matter what scale we're working at. It's mm. all about just dreaming up what we want to do and then figuring out how to execute it. So it doesn't matter what the scale is on that level. But I think the big difference with this movie is just the audiences that you're able to reach worldwide and the fans you're able to connect with worldwide is shocking. I mean, these movies are a global phenomenon and they're connecting everybody on every continent around the world at the same time. Everyone is involved in a conversation about these movies. And that's a, yeah. really, a really inspiring thing. And, and don't you think... Don't you think that's a gift because we have so few communal, I'm so glad you said that because we have so few, you know where I'm going, communal experiences anymore with, we're living in an era with 800 channels and all of these entertainment options. The fact that your movie brought people together, I, I, there's nothing, can't be nothing better for you. I mean, that's great. There's nothing better. And it is really, it's, it's such a shock when you go to a different culture that has a different political system, different issues than our, our culture does and, and realize that that movie is connecting with people in a very powerful way. It's surprising and it's also inspiring because, again, in a fractured world, it says we, we do have 
tethers to one another that, that matter. Absolutely. Right. For years, I've been treating the Hulk like he's some kind of disease, something to get rid of. But then I start looking at him as the cure. 18 months in a gamma lab. I put the brains and the brawn together. And now look at me. Best of both worlds. Excuse me, Mr. Hulk? Yes. Can we, can we get a photo? 100% little person. Come on, step on up. You mind? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Say green. 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 Did you get that? That's good. Do you want to grab one with me? I'm Ant Man. No. Yeah. <laughs> Another clip from Avengers Endgame. By the way, the Blu ray is now available. And you all know me, I'm a nerd. And it has great special features. We're back with Anthony Russo, the director, co-director of Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. I, I want to... I just have to mention real quickly, yeah. in that clip you just played, that was, uh, the children in that clip were my son, my brother Joe's daughter, and our nephew. So oh, seriously? Oh, that. nice! That. <laughs> that was a fun day on set. Two great concepts, spoiler alerts. I'm not going to give anything away, but just this is conceptual. I have to ask as a fan, I'm asking for Marvel fans, the, the, we see Thor... And we see the Hulk very differently in this movie. Whose idea was that? You know, that's, you know, my brother and I go through a very thorough process with the writers, Steve Marcus and Chris McFeely. And um, we spend months and months in the room together thinking about where we can take the characters. And that really came out of that process, just us going, how do we surprise ourselves? How do we surprise the actors? How do we surprise the audiences? How do we push these characters into a place where th we, we never guess they go, but is very much grounded in their history and their arc? What did Chris say when you said you're going to be Puffy Thor? <laughs> he, he loved it because at, by that point, he was already th shooting Thor Ragnarok. And that has a very different tone for Thor. Very. So he was already in this zone of, like, let's get crazy with Thor. So uh, this version of Thor, like, slipped right in. Yeah. I, I got to ask you. I said it on this show because the show's all pop culture. When we saw Tom Holland... For the first time as Spider-Man, I, I looked at nothing. I love Toby. I love Andrew. There was something. I, I just that that that's some of the best casting I, I I have seen in years. Did you know it right away when Tom uh, when when you saw the audition tapes, the screen tests? Yeah, as you can imagine, it was an extremely thorough and exhaustive casting process to cast that character because of the pressure on that character. And uh, we went through. We ended up testing several actors with. Robert Downey Jr. Um, because we were introducing that character in Civil War and he had a, his primary storyline was with Tony Stark, Robert's character. Um, so yeah, but no, we knew it. We did know it right away once we got to that final testing process. Um, and look, the thing that makes Peter Parker unique among the spectrum of Marvel heroes, especially when you're looking at him in, in the context of an Avenger movie, is the fact that he's a teenager. He's a kid. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to run at that idea. Because we can all relate to that. Yeah. We can all relate to aspects of Peter Parker's life. We don't have to be a web slinger. We can, that's, yeah. No, it's, made, it's, made a, it's a very, it's, a coming, it's an awkward oh, coming yeah, of yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the awkward coming of age issues that we all have to deal with in different ways as metaphor, yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you in a minute where, where you can meet Anthony. Let's talk about uh, Robert Downey Jr. for a second. Are there days when you're looking at dailies or you're, you're, looking, you're looking in the monitor and you just go, this guy's just amazing. I mean, you're just taken away by how good he is. Yeah. All the time. All the time. Robert is, one, is, is the hardest working actor we've ever worked with. He's focused. He, he, it's, he's an am amazing collaborator. Um, my brother and I rely on him a lot as we sort of, you know, because Joe and I work as a team, we're very into the process of collaboration and movie making. So we're very open to all the collaborators, the actors, the cinematographer, et cetera. And Robert has been a, one of our cornerstone collaborators over the past three movies. And I will always, I always think back on, early in his career, Robert Altman once said that he was the best actor of his generation, and I really believe that you can still say that about Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Who, who in a, we have just a minute or two left. Who in the best way possible surprised you? Meaning, like, you had a, you had a perception of what they would be like, and then they come on set, and they delighted you in a way that, you, that was unexpected. Who, who is that for you? You know, there's so many. You know, because, again, these are all phenomenal actors, right? So the characters that they craft for the screen are freak, while they're based in sort of personal things for them, they're quite different and distinct from them as people. So they all kind of shock you on that level. 
Um, but I would say Anthony Mackie is perhaps the most different because he plays the character Falcon. He has a very sort of a little more focus and, and somberness on screen and seriousness. Um, but he is the craziest joker behind the scenes. Really? Ever oh, my God. He walks onto a set, and everybody just starts cracking up. You, you hear him coming a mile away. He's really funny. We have about 30 seconds. I was a asking Anthony during the commercial break, the, the Blu-ray's out. Uh, just as a nerd, I'm always curious, how much say do you get over what's, what we get in a Blu-ray as the director? Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we participate very intensely in that process. We work with our editor, to uh, come up with the final versions of the deleted scenes. We work with Marvel and Disney to come up with special features, yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, I, on, behalf, on behalf of every fan that's watching and jealous that I get to ask you questions, I just wanna thank you for taking great care of characters that we love. I mean, you, you did such an astounding job, so thank you so much. That, that means a lot, thank yeah. you for saying you that. Really you. Yeah, you really that. did, yeah, you really did. Give it up for Anthony, everybody, once thank again. You, you can meet Anthony, here we go. You can meet Anthony right down the road from where we are at the Best Buy in Eden Prairie at 1230. Y'all got time after the show. <laughs> uh, and the Blu-ray uh, for Avengers Endgame is available now. It's also on stream. I got it on Apple TV, and I love it. We'll be right back with our remaining minutes after this. Thank you, my friend, so much. What a pleasure. Thank you.